Hey, Teddy K here for the Best Buy blog, and in this video, we're going to take a look at the Fitbit Charge 6, available at Best Buy now, and Fitbit's latest wearable that also has a lot more Google in it this time. When Fitbit releases an activity tracker, you pretty much know what you're going to get, especially at this point, right? So the Charge 6 borrows very heavily from the Charge 5, which is a good thing. The Charge 5 did a lot of things right. The Charge 6 kind of tweaks on that and adds something in particular that I think is very important, which is the haptic button. I'll get to that later. This device though is, you just have to view it based on what it's supposed to be, but there's a lot more Google in it this time. So Google's acquisition of Fitbit has changed Fitbit devices in a number of ways, particularly on the software side. So now we're starting to see some Google app integration into the Fitbit, into Fitbit activity trackers. We've already seen it a little bit on the smartwatch side. Now we're just seeing it in the charge series. But in order to get all that, or to have all of it, there are things you end up giving up, and we're gonna get to that too. So as you can see here, the general design of the Charge 6 is pretty much the same, right? So uh, if this looks really familiar to you because the screen size is the same and everything else is the same, it's because it is. In fact, you can use Charge 5 bands on the Charge 6. The uh, scrap mechanism is exactly the same. So if uh, you already have a series of bands that you've used with the previous uh, Charge 5 and you're upgrading, you can take them with you, no problem. Most things are pretty much intact. Uh, so when you're navigating the interface, you see that there's, you know, it just, see all that. You just scroll through here and exercise, sleep, readiness score, sleep score, heart rate, hourly activity, all those things are there. And when you swipe down, you get Google Wallet, do not disturb, sleep mode. Then you have, oh yeah, that's heart rate on equipment. We'll get to that after. And then screen wake, find phone, water lock, and settings. So pretty simple to get around. And then if you just press the haptic button, remember I mentioned the haptic button earlier? Yeah, there it is. So the haptic button acts a lot like a back button. So if you scroll or swipe, I should say, so you have notifications, then you have exercise, alarms, timers, PDA scan, and also the ECG. Oh, and Google Maps. Yeah, we'll get to that too. YouTube music, and then back, right? So it's just like a carousel. Now, if I'm here and I wanna go back to the home screen, I can just do that too. So anytime that you're in something, you can go back a step. So for example, if we go over to exercise, right? And then we scroll here. I don't know why I keep saying scroll. It's actually swiping. Anyway, so within exercise, you can see that you can also set a goal, set laps, things like that, right? Now, if I press the haptic button, I go back to the home screen. You can also swipe to go back. So for example, if I go to more, okay, and I'm checking out all the exercises, there are 40 to choose from, by the way. So this is more than it was in the Charge 5. Uh, there's a lot more here and they're all accessible from the device itself. You don't actually have to necessarily set anything up uh, within the um, within the app in order to do that. So if I'm going through the exercises here and I wanna go back, I just swipe to the right and I go back that way. And then if I wanna go home, of course, I press that button. I go here. And one thing I, I wanted to mention also is that if I go to screen wake, manual, auto. Now this is refers to when you're flicking your wrist, right? So if we turn it off, then we turn it back there, that's what that refers to. You can also go always on. So if you want the always on display, you can do that too. So display settings, brightness, normal, screen wake auto, screen timeout, default, and then we can always go always on display. Got it. I mentioned Google Maps earlier, and this is one of the new features that's on here. So along with Wallet, Google Wallet, and uh, YouTube Music, these are the three main apps that are on the Fitbit Charge 6. So it's kind of new, it's not, uh, Google's presence on Fitbit devices continues to grow, and this is an example here on, the, on this activity tracker. Uh, what happens here is that if you open this, it'll connect to Google Maps on your phone. So you have to have the app on your phone in order for this to work. But basically, if you start navigation on the phone, then you will see turn-by-turn -turn directions appear here uh, on the device. Super convenient, a lot like some smartwatches do. Uh, I really liked it, and I think you would as well. Uh, wallet is the same thing. So wallet is you um, set that up on your phone. And when you 
synced everything with the device and you want to go and pay for something con with a contactless payment, you just use this and you can pay that way. YouTube Music is uh, one of those things that I think is going to be a little, well, maddening, I think, because it's the only music streaming app on this device that offers playback controls. So you won't be able to use Spotify or anything like that to control playback. You can only do it with YouTube Music, which is a downside, in my opinion. All right, so we go out of this. Now, when it comes to health tracking, the sleep tracking is largely similar. So a lot of the same sensors are in here. You have a uh, skin temperature sensor, you have an ECG, you have the SpO2 for blood oxygen. Of course, you have the heart rate monitor. So a lot of the good sensory technologies in here, built-in GPS, of course, for tracking exercises at route, pace, distance, things like that. Uh, EDA and ECG actually work similarly in the sense that when you want to do a reading, okay, you take your index finger and your thumb and you put them like this. So as you can see here, normal sinus rhythm. I'll spare you the uh, time uh, related to getting an EDA score. This takes at least uh, two to three minutes to do, uh, but either you can just get a, an idea of what it does and how it works. It's the same thing as the Charge 5, but if you've never used that device, then basically it's the skin temperature sensor just taking a reading and measuring stress levels, uh, things like that. You can do this manually anytime. Uh, as much as you want really during the day. It, it will sometimes take re take readings on its own too, so it will notice uh, certain anomalies uh, if, they're, if they are there. Although all that data, whether you do it manually or there's anything automated, will all go into your, daily, your readiness score, your stress management score that you will see in the Fitbit app. So there's a lot there and again this is a lot of a, a lot of this is a carryover from what the charge 5 was doing uh, only in this case uh, you have a, a very active uh, eda sensor involved built-in gps i mentioned this earlier uh, i'm mentioning it again because it, the built-in gps and the always on display are the two biggest battery drainers battery life is excellent on this it's actually exactly the same as the charge 5. so there's no difference there you will you go easily easily go weak if you use GPS and the always on display very sparingly, or if you don't use the always on display at all, uh, you could probably go up to a week. If you use them a lot though, it'll whittle it down to about two days, maybe three max. So bear that in mind if uh, battery life really matters to you. It is a proprietary charger, exactly the same charger in fact as the Charge 5. So there's no difference as far as that goes either. Also the same water resistance applies here. So you can, take this into the water you can take it into the sea if you want to swim on there in there too if you have equipment that'll recognize so if you're using any kind of an ex exercise equipment or even an app or anything that will recognize the device then in this case you have a a more seamless connection between the charge six and whatever it is you're using uh, i can't tell you exactly you'd have to look up exactly what uh, will work in that regard but at least it's there it's a pretty cool feature actually now I should point out that this is not a smartwatch and doesn't really, although it tries to be at times, it is not a smartwatch. You won't be able, there's no Google Assistant in here. You're not able to take phone calls or anything like that. You can see notifications, notifications will come in, phone calls, you'll see who's calling, you'll see who's messaging, things like that. But uh, when it comes to broader notifications, those don't, won't necessarily show up here. So that's something else to keep in mind too. Um, although the uh, Fitbit is sort of inching this towards more of a smartwatch dynamic. It is not quite there yet. It's still very much an activity tracker. So now you get a pretty good idea of what you can expect of the Charge 6, which is that it's a lot like the Charge 5, but of course there have been some changes. Whether or not those changes make a big difference for you, for example, if you already have a Charge 5, I don't know that it's really worth upgrading to the Charge 6 unless you feel really strongly about the Google integration or your a YouTube music subscriber and you love the integration that that offers too all in all though it's easily one of the best activity trackers you can get so fitbit or any other brand this is one of the best you'll get for sure it works it's seamless it's comfortable and it although it doesn't integrate as well as it used to you can at least use it with ios or android and not worry about any kind of compatibility issues but of course the only other caveat that you have to take into account above the cost of actually buying it is the fitbit premium subscription if you're going to get the most out of this device, you're almost shoehorned into getting that description. You get six months free 
with the purchase of the charge six but after that you're gonna have to pay up and that's something that i think you're gonna have to consider if you're gonna go for this and that's my review of the fitbit charge six you can check out more about it by just clicking that link below for the best buy blog i'm teddy k thanks for watching